In this video, we're going to look at how to take an abstract finite state machine and translate it into a concrete data path and control unit. The abstract finite state machine that we're looking at is one that implements an odd parity checker. The details on how this is created is covered somewhere else. For now, we have this abstract finite state machine and we need to look at it to determine what different elements we need in the data path. So if we look, we can see that there is a counter. One counter is incrementing in every case in the count state, and another is conditionally incrementing depending on the value of data. We also need to look at the value of count and compare it to some other value n. This value n is set within certain states, so we're going to need a register to hold the value of n. And then finally, we're going to need to determine whether the one count value is odd or even. So we're going to start with the n value which needs to store the value of n input so we're going to need a register for this so we're going to have a register and we need to be able to enable this register because we only need to write to it some of the time and we don't know how many bits right now this is it depends on how large of a value of n we might deal with and so into this we're going to feed in an input and essentially this output represents our value n in our finite state machine or our abstract finite state machine as with every flip-flop this has a clock and somehow this is going to need to be enabled and so this is going to be an input from our control unit and I'm going to label this control signal n enable because it's enabling our n register so that's what will hold the value of n and store the value from number inputs we also need to be able to or have two different counters or values that are incrementing. One of these counters is going to be compared to the value n, so we're going to look at this one first. So for a counter, we basically need a register to hold the value, and then we're going to need an adder to increment the value. And so we're going to take the current value and feed it back around into the adder, and for this one, this is the count counter. It is incrementing any time that it's enabled. And so we're going to add a 1 to this. And we're going to handle setting this back to 0 by using the reset input to this set of flip-flops. So we're going to take this reset signal and get it from our control unit. And we're going to call this counter reset because it's what's going to reset this counter. This counter here represents the CNT value in our abstract finite state machine. And this CNT value, in addition to being incremented when we're in the count state, is also used to determine if we're exiting the count state. And so we need to compare the value of n to this count value. So we're going to have a simple comparator that does an equality comparison, and it's going to take in the value of count and n. And if you notice, I'm taking in the value from the ALU that would in some ways be the next value of count because we want to exit this when the counter is going to become n. And if we took the value of the output of the register, then we'd really go one more cycle than we wanted to with this counter. And so this, the result of this comparison is going to be used in our control unit to determine our state transitions. And so I'm going to call this count equal to n. So this takes care of one of our counters. We also have the second counter which is going to count the number of ones in our inputs. So we also want a register for this and it's also going to need an adder to calculate its next value. Unlike the first counter which was incrementing every time we were in count, this one is counting based off of the value or incrementing based off of the value of data. So we're going to feed in the data value here. This one still needs to be reset, so it's reset in both the match state and the default state. So this is going to be reset at the same time that the first counter is. So we're going to use the same counter reset signal to reset this one. And this is the one count. With this one count, we need to determine if it's odd or even. And since we're counting in binary, we can look at the least significant bit for this. And so we're going to pull off, just like before, the value of the counter and this is k bits initially and so we're going to pull off the most significant bit which is the k minus one bit here and we are going to take this bit and if it's equal to one that means we have an odd number and if it's not equal to one it means we have an even number and we can take this and if it's one that means 
that our signal is odd and otherwise it's even. And so this takes care of all that we need in our data path and our second task would be to adjust our abstract finite state machine on our state transition diagram and translate it into a concrete one. And so here I've laid out or repeated the state transition diagram with the concrete signals which are reset and start which we can use directly and now we need to translate our abstract signals into something more concrete. So for the n equals number input in the base and the match state, we need to enable our n flip-flop for this. So we get to, we want to assert and enable for both of these cases. For these same states, we need to reset our flip-flop. So we also want to assert counter reset in these two states. Within the count state, it is just doing the default increment by one or increment by data. So as long as reset is not being asserted, the count is going to work just fine in the count state. So we actually don't need anything in there. And so the last thing we need is to deal with our transition out of the count state. So if count equals n, so we have a count equals n state. And in this case, the result is even. So it means we're not odd then we're going to go to our default state and if count is equal to n and we are odd then we're going to our match state because we had a match for our odd parity and so this takes care of the concrete state transition diagram for our odd parity checker and that's all we need to create our data path and our control we could obviously create real hardware for our finite state machine but this takes care of the basics